Oddworld Squeak's Odyssey was the originally planned third game in the Oddworld Quintology, coming after Munch's Odyssey. Probably what everyone really wants to know though, is who exactly is Squeak, the main protagonist for the midpoint of the Quintology. And well, basically we have such little information on Squeak's Odyssey that it's not really known what or who Squeak is exactly, or at least very little that's actually confirmed about him. Now there is an image that I didn't know about until like a couple of years ago of concept art which is apparently said to be of Squeak, but it's not confirmed to be him. It's just basically the only supposed image of Squeak that's been made public as far as I'm aware anyway. So let's investigate and try and work out if this really is Squeak. Interestingly, prior to this image, for some reason in my head I've always pictured Squeak as being, or looking like rather, one of the Almighty Raisin's rats from Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. Pretty much any time I've mentioned Squeak in previous videos, I think I've used footage of the rats to represent him, as I've always just imagined him that way. Though I'm not entirely sure why my mind made this connection. I guess rats squeak, so maybe that's why. But I find it interesting because the concept art supposedly of Squeak isn't that far off from one of the rats if you ask me. I mean it's obviously not the same thing, but it's pretty similar looking in my opinion. Which I know isn't any confirmation that the image is him, I'm just saying that this guy looks like he'd be called Squeak. Polish website ppe.pl has an article from May 2021 that basically sums up the history of the Oddworld games and it even has a paragraph about Squeak which also links to the same image and outright says Squeak's concept art is circulating around the web but you have to bear in mind that this is not a fully validated concept of this creature. The website talks more about the game, saying, Squeak's Odyssey, planned as the third of the Oddworld pentalogues, the player was to control a being known as Squeak, about which many legends and understatements have grown up. Lon Lanning later, perhaps only partially, dispelled these doubts by saying Squeak was supposed to be a lower phase entity with strong ties to a certain Vikers. Now this is interesting, and similarly, an article from Italian website GameSoul in April 2021 said, these are words that hurt, and perhaps demonstrate excessive ambition on the part of Oddworld inhabitants, the development team. The third and never arrived chapter of Quintology would be called Oddworld Squeak's Odyssey. According to an interview with Lon Lanning, in this chapter we would have taken control of a creature, born from the remains of the carcasses of the evil experiments of the Sadics. The Sadics being, I believe, what the Vikers are known as in some languages, including Italian apparently. The article continues by saying, In short, a light and not at all disturbing stuff, remnants that would have given body to a robotic botched out creature called Squeak. This is certainly sounding like the supposed concept art image, a robotic botched out creature. But perhaps the best piece of evidence to suggest it actually is Squeak is from Lorne Lanning himself after being asked about him in a Wired article from 2014. Lanning said, Squeak's kind of a spoiler, but I'll tell you this. The idea was that the Vikers, who were animal researchers that would kill a million bunnies just to make a better fabric softener, had been making robotic life support devices so they could repossess people's body parts like how you'd get evicted. They'd stick what was left of you in this clunky robotic form and toss you out on the streets. That's who Squeak was, but who he really was would come out in the story. I love this synopsis of Squeak, and indeed, if we look at the image, this no-limbed creature with cybernetic and scientific stuff attached to him certainly looks like someone who's had body parts repossessed and is now just left with a clunky robot body. Now interestingly, I'm sure I read or heard somewhere quite recently that Lorne said the repossessing bodies kind of thing was a plot point of another intellectual property Oddworld inhabitants plan to do called Citizen Siege. I've had a look and I can't seem to find this reference, so I'm probably just getting mixed up. Though it is interesting to note that Citizen Siege, according to the Oddworld wiki, is one of the stories Lorne Lanning told Sherry McKenna to convince her to co-found Oddworld Inhabitants. And on oddworldlibrary.net, it says the plot of Squeak's Odyssey was the first story Lorne Lanning told Sherry McKenna to convince her to open a video game studio with him. She originally didn't believe that Abe or Munch could be as likeable as Squeak, but she now likes both of them more. So that's an interesting connection between the two intellectual properties, I guess. In fact, speaking of which, it's worth noting how astonishingly long the story of Squeak has existed. 
Presumably, judging by timelines, I think Lorne Lanning first likely came up with the story in around 1989 or 1990. He told the story to Sherry and spent two years trying to convince her to found Oddworld Inhabitants, which eventually happened in 1994 and it was seemingly first mentioned by name in public in what was apparently Oddworld Inhabitants' first interview, a day before Abe's Odyssey was even released. Which kind of surprises me, I'm surprised they didn't do interviews before that, apparently. As one of the articles I've mentioned said, fans have had many years opportunity to speculate about the hero and gameplay of Squeak's Odyssey, given the long time span between its name being revealed and even the slightest hint of its story being told. Now all this stuff about the plot of Squeak's Odyssey is really fascinating to me because I didn't know all this until I started researching this video. I remember reading about Squeak's Odyssey when I was younger but a lot of this stuff I didn't know, like the fact that the Vikers are in it and play such a major role in the story. It's interesting that the Vikers were sort of the main enemies of Munch's Odyssey and seemingly perhaps were going to be of Squeak's Odyssey too. Which kind of contrasts with the assumption that I've always had that each Quintology installment would introduce a new hero and a new set of enemies. Like with Abe you had the Gluckens and the Sligs, and Munch comes along you've got the Interns and the Vikers. I always assumed that each part would introduce a new set of master and underling enemy partnership if that makes sense. And that might still be the case, especially when you consider like Munch's Odyssey also very heavily featured the Gluckens and the Sligs still, so you know maybe it's sort of like the same kind of thing, just to carry over with Squeak's Odyssey, maybe it would introduce a new set of enemies, but the Vikers would still be there and just like the Gluckens in Munch's Odyssey it would play a significant role. Something that's worth noting is that the Oddworld Soulstorm art of the video game book that came with the Oddworld Soulstorm Collector's Edition last year mentions Squeak, but outright says that Squeak himself is a Viker, specifically saying, after Munch's Odyssey and after its sequel Munch's Exodus was considered and then cancelled, several other projects were studied. The first was Squeak's Odyssey, the true third episode of the Quintology with a new character Squeak, a Viker able to control a robotic body. The idea was shelved. Now this can either be taken as a surprise and it may be accidental reveal of Squeak's species, or it's just a mistake, which is what is generally thought to be the case. The book was created by a French company called Pix and Love Editions, so it's generally presumed that this was likely just a mistranslation or misunderstanding of some kind, and that Squeak isn't actually a Viker as it says. I thought this was very weird when I read it at the time, but now knowing that actually Squeak has very close ties to the Vikers, it kind of makes way more sense how this misunderstanding could have come about. Squeak isn't a Viker that controls a robotic body, he's someone that controls a robotic body that the Vikers made. Which brings us back onto the image, which by this point I'm now fully convinced is Squeak. I'd be very surprised if it wasn't him. But this version here, which I presume I'll be shown throughout the video when I edit it, is the concept art colorized by me. And when colorizing it, it really made me notice and think about what's actually shown here. And I tried to reflect that by my choice of colors to use, which by no means do I think are accurate. But there's reasons that I colored him this way. Well I mean some of my colour choices were just immaterial, like I made the helmet blue because it reminded me of World War 1 French army helmets. The big robot I made silver because that's just what I imagined it being, and I added the bronze accents just to add variation and highlight other details of it. In reality I imagine the helmet and whatnot would be the same colour as the robot, which I would probably imagine as a dark silver, but probably more rusty. Some of my choices had more meaning though. For example, you see all these like medical canisters and that kind of thing that I made green and red, sort of resembling those what they called IV bags, I think, judging from a quick search, which I think means intravenous fluids or something like that, which according to this website are used to prevent dehydration, maintain blood pressure, or give patients medicines or nutrients if they can't eat. And I assume on Oddworld probably a whole lot more. In Squeak's example, I imagine it has all sorts of weird medical fluids that I imagine are keeping him alive. Certainly the design of it looks to me like the IV bag systems were very likely a direct inspiration for the concept art. There's of course the blood bag variants in real life that, as far as I assume, are used to ensure patients have enough blood and so I made the liquid in the round glass container red and I sort of imagined it was like blood that was ensuring Squeak remained alive. I mean, consider the immense blood loss and dire state he must be in considering he's basically had most of his body repossessed, presumably. 
You know, this whole get-up is, as Lanning put it, a robotic life support system. I could imagine Squeak being put in this big, hulking robotic suit, and I made a little animation to visualise it that reminded me of the rise of Darth Vader scene at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Squeak, can you hear me? Yes, Master. Where is Toby? Is he safe? Is he alright? But actually, you know what? The more I read about Squeak, the more this generally does remind me of Darth Vader. Just like Vader, Squeak is trapped in this clunky, massive suit that he has to wear to stay alive. And one of the things I've always found interesting in the Star Wars expanded canon or whatever about Darth Vader is that apparently his suit is actually incredibly uncomfortable for him to wear. And looking at Squeak's outfit, if you can call it an outfit, I could imagine it also being quite unpleasant for him. His helmet and cybernetic implants are full of parts for wires and whatever to be inserted in, and even appears to have what looks like respirators to me, kind of similar to Darth Vader again, that I've just realised appear to be inserted into Squeak's face, which looks uncomfortable. No wonder he's got that constipated look on his face. And another maybe comparison that I thought about is the way Darth Vader is a guy who basically sold his soul to the devil, right? I've always perceived him as like a tragic figure. He's a good guy ultimately, but he made some very bad choices and is now being punished for it by being trapped in this suit. Now the thing about Squeak is that if he has had his body repossessed, that would mean at one point he was a functioning member of industrial society. Potentially, Squeak was a Kanzuma, Kanzumas being consumers, the members of the industrial society who are the people the Gluckens and Vikers make products for. Either way, presumably Squeak is someone that got into debt and couldn't pay, maybe got mixed up with the Vikers or whatnot, and as a result, he had his body and probably everything else taken from him and is just left on the streets with just this suit that's seemingly designed to be simple and bare minimum to just keep him alive. It certainly makes sense considering Squeak is said to be on the lowest portion on the food chain economically. I don't think you can get much worse than having your body repossessed from you. It seems like it's an example of the typical Oddworld exaggerated commentary on our own society. In our world, people can be evicted from their homes and left out on the streets, but on Oddworld, they go a step further when taking everything from them and outright evict people from their own bodies. Either way, very grim. And thinking about it, I say this as though a Quintology hero being a functioning member of industrial society is a completely new thing, but actually I guess that was basically the case with Abe too. Abe was also a happy member of the industrial society, until he got screwed over by them, or realised he was about to get screwed over. Same thing with Squeak, but I feel like Squeak was perhaps more of the Kanzuma level as opposed to an outright slave. And who knows, if that was the case, maybe the reason Squeak gets into debt and ends up losing everything Thing is due to the economic catastrophes that are going on because of Abe and Munch, Rupture Farms and Soulstorm Brewery disasters, and not to mention the presumably immediately prior to Squeak's Odyssey, Vikers Lab's destruction. Maybe specifically because of that, the events of Munch's Odyssey, the Vikers are more aggressively collecting on their debts, or something like that. I don't know, of course, this is all just my personal theorising, but it's interesting to think about, I guess. Back to the image, Squeak is attached to a cable that presumably connects into the robot body, but attached to the cable as though to emphasise that he has truly lost everything, he's got this tag that resembles one of those tags morticians put on dead people's corpses, as though that's essentially all Squeak is now, basically a dead person. You can't get any more money from him, he's dead to industrial society. Well, that's my interpretation of it anyway. It's clear that Squeak is not in the best of condition. Living on a life support system and having all these medical devices and chemicals inserted into him, and as a result, in my colorization, I gave him sickly green skin and red eyes, sort of referencing bloodshot eyes, in order to reflect his seemingly ill state. 
Speaking of illnesses, oddworldlibrary.net has a few references about aspects of the plot of Squeak's Odyssey, saying, Gorman Dizenza is a disease on Oddworld that affects the extremely rich. For several years, fans questioned whether it was a canonical condition, but in 2008, Lorne explained that Gorman Dizenza has an important part to play in Oddworld Squeak's Odyssey. The terrorist actions of Abe have caused such a huge loss to Lady Margaret's profits that her grandmother is automatically awoken from cryogenic preservation to ensure the proper handling of what turns out to be her investments. Suffering from Gorman Dizenza, research into whose cure, thought to be found in the blood of Gabbitts she has been funding, she's been frozen to prolong her remaining lifespan. Now with the clock ticking on her remaining 90 days, she finds her business empire besieged by a slave rebellion, and her research stalled by the escape of the last known Gabbitt, and brings back into action an old regime of brutality. Sounds like martial law. Considering we were meant to meet Lady Margaret in Munch's Odyssey, but that didn't happen, I assume if Squeak's Odyssey had been made, it probably would have been quite a bit different from this. In an interview after the release of Munch's Odyssey in French magazine Joypad, Lorne Lannan was talking about how each game in the Quintology will bring us closer to the major industrial civilization of Oddworld, with the final game being set in the heart of the bustling cities and those kinds of places. He said, The first game was set in a small place of Oddworld, because I wanted to be able to show all this world and all this activity in the last game. Squeak's Odyssey is, by analogy, set at the harbour where products arrive, the beginning of civilization, and it will continue afterwards. Of course, this unfortunately didn't happen. The plan, as originally intended, was described by Lorne in an IGN article from February 2000, saying, Munch will definitely have a bonus game. There are many bonus games that we want to make with the Oddworld universe on the 128-bit level. In the meantime, we will learn if the PS2 will be able to run the third part of the Quintology, Oddworld Squeak's Odyssey. However, after Munch's Odyssey had to be so drastically changed due to technical limitations and whatnot, both the Munch bonus game Munch's Exodus and Squeak's Odyssey were put on the back burner, and in 2005, after Stranger's Wrath didn't sell as well as expected and Oddworld Inhabitants shut its doors, Squeak's Odyssey was outright shelved indefinitely, with production of it apparently never having started. However, when Oddworld Inhabitants reopened its doors a few years later, it looks like we might finally get to see Squeak's Odyssey at some point, with the Oddworld website's frequently asked questions section saying during the development of New and Tasty, will there ever be new Oddworld games? Yes, looking into the future, we hope to return to other unreleased projects, Sligstorm and the brutal bias of Fenger's Clot, including the long-awaited continuation of the Oddworld Quintology with Squeak's Odyssey. It is far too early to start talking about these or any other future plans. However, even more so, Squeak's Odyssey was actually seemingly slated to be made and released sometime along the development road, with Stuart Gilray, head of Just Add Water, saying before the release of New and Taste, We've been discussing it on and off for two and a half years now. We want to do it, but like I said, that depends on how New and Tasty does and whatever else we do after that. The idea is to do a new and tasty, something else, then squeak if we get a chance to do it. We know what the premise for squeak is, we already know what the backstory is, we already know what that is to degree, we already know what squeak is or who squeak is, we know how he comes about, we know where his, what his story is, we know what kind of gameplay mechanics we need for him. And that's an interesting point about gameplay. What type of gameplay would the game introduce? Well, being the third game in the Quintology, it would unite Squeak with the heroes of the previous installments, Abe and Munch, with the players taking control and jumping around all three to utilise their unique abilities to progress in the game. What abilities would Squeak bring to the trio, though, is another question. Lorne Lannan has said that symbiosis would be vital to Squeak's Odyssey. However, oddworldlibrary.net specifically describes symbiosis in Squeak's Odyssey as mutualism, which Britannica.com says is the association between organisms of two different species in which each benefits. Mutualistic arrangements are most likely to develop between organisms with widely different living requirements 
environments. So I suppose some kind of symbiosis with other creatures, or maybe considering the cybernetics that seemingly connect to a robot body, maybe mechanical symbiosis of some kind. Maybe he just means the robot body. The thing is, I'm curious about how that would work and be original, because Abe can already take control of creatures and Munch can already take control of machines, so it'd be interesting to find out how they'd have made Squeak's symbiotic abilities unique from what Abe and Munch already do. But considering the concept art, presumably, of Squeak shows him outside of the robot body, it suggests to me that maybe in the gameplay he would be able to exit it. So that might be a dynamic, whereby in some situations, maybe when strength is required, he can go about in this massive clunky mechanical body. But in other situations, for some reason, maybe there's stuff that he could do when he's not in the robot. Maybe he can be plugged into other devices. Why? Who knows? But I don't know, it's interesting to speculate. Maybe the symbiosis that Lanin was referring to was literally just his symbiosis with the robot body. Maybe there'd be alternative robot bodies he could get. At Eurogamer 2012, Lorne Lanin was asked if the plan was still for Oddworld Squeak's Odyssey to be the third game of the Quintology, to which he replied, I hope so, but then warned that you always have to be careful of changing market conditions, adding, being intelligent, you have to be adaptable, so sometimes, you know, the intent is, yes, Squeak would be the next, but maybe something happens that makes that not make sense. Regardless, you have to be malleable. Later on that year, in the December 2012 Reddit Q&A that Lauren Lanning and Stuart Gilray did, in response to someone asking which Oddworld game they'd want to go back to first, Gilray said, personally, I want to do Squeak's Odyssey, to which Lauren replied, I want to do Squeak's Odyssey, but it would be a very expensive game. We'll take some time, but it's a very messed up story. Winky face. The asker then said, how expensive? $20 million? $30 million? I'm willing to sell a hobo's kidney if it'll help. To which Stuart replied, yeah, around $25 million. So how much can you get for the kidney? The poll that Oddworld Inhabitants did in 2013 to gauge their audience's opinion on what they'd like to see next from Oddworld ended up with Squeak's Odyssey getting only 6% of the vote, with 991 out of 15,869, suggesting despite generally being cited as a favourite among the creators, the fans that voted at least had other priorities at the time. But to be fair, a lot of people felt that it made more sense for Abe's Exodus HD to come about beforehand. That's the option I voted for, if I recall correctly, because they'd made HD remasters of Strangers Wrath and Munch's Odyssey, plus a remake of Abe's Odyssey, so generally, I feel like if that hadn't been the obvious option, Squeak's Odyssey and probably a lot of the other ones would have been much higher on the list. However, with Oddworld Inhabitants choosing to make Oddworld Soulstorm instead, with a new Quintology featuring Abe as the only main protagonist, it seems unlikely that Squeak's Odyssey will ever get made now. Although, for some reason, it's apparently a game listed on streaming service DLive. Although, I wouldn't be surprised if the plan is for the story of Squeak to be implemented in some way in this new Quintology, just as Lanin has said he intends to include Munch and Stranger in it as well. Considering Sherry McKenna was told the entire story of Oddworld by Lorne Lanning and Squeak was the one she liked the most, it'd be a great shame if we never got to experience the story of Oddworld, Squeak's Odyssey. Hello, follow me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 